Good morning, Soul Surfers. Tuesday, uh, May 18th. It's foggy again today, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Dr. Seuss. I know it's a little bit stale of the subject, and the whole fiasco in the news or whatever happened a little while ago. But, anyways, I grew up reading Dr. Seuss. I had no idea that there was racist overtones. I enjoyed Dr. Seuss books a lot, but uh, in the end, I'm done with them. Uh, my kids grown up past the point where they would be interested in reading Dr. Seuss, but uh, even if they weren't, my kid doesn't need Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss isn't going to make or break my kid's childhood. And recognizing the fact that it was had racist overtones isn't going to diminish or take away from my childhood or anybody else's childhood either. You have to analyze what's making you uncomfortable about the situation. Uh, are you afraid that kids in the future aren't going to get to read Dr. Seuss? How important is it? They're just books. They're not they're not even, you know, the greatest books. They're just entertaining. That's all they are, is entertainment. But if it, that entertainment's hurting people, if it makes people feel bad, we don't need it. And did you do any research on, on the subject? What the change, or the changes they want to make, or if Dr. Seuss was in fact racist? Before you formed an opinion on it? It's okay to form an opinion on it, but to go ponta, argue about it with people and trying to convince them that your viewpoint is right when you don't know anything about what's going on. Uh, just do a little bit of due diligence first. I don't, I don't mean to be negative. And if you still enjoy Dr. Seuss, that's okay too. The point here is to recognize that We've been brought up with institutionalized racism, and that needs to change. That's, that's all there is to it. Dr. Seuss books aren't going away, they're making minor changes. I uh, also want to talk about Walmart fucking Pokemon. I, personally, I don't like Pokemon. I'm not into it. But I wear this because it helps me remember to be childlike, which is important. We take things too serious. <clears throat> so I don't mind looking like a little kid wearing a Pikachu backpack. Uh, even though, you know, personally I think Pokemon's violent, but, you know, a lot of people enjoyed it. And if, you know, if they like it, then that's fine. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I would prefer people were into things that were more wholesome and uplifting. But such is the nature of the society that we live in today. Yeah. Not all that came out very smooth. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit some shit out. But you know me, I'm not into editing. Uh, today, it's pretty foggy. I'm going to do a time lapse again. I probably already mentioned that, huh? Anyways, just some thoughts for the day. Sorry again, Bo. Uh, let's see how today goes. Thank you for joining me today for that 37 seconds of fog. In closing, I'd like to say, if you don't understand why Black Lives Matter is important and what it means, it's probably because you don't understand what equity or inequity is. Uh, yes, all lives matter, but right now, 
the black person in America has it really hard because of institutionalized racism. It's a thing, there's no denying it, you can't deny it. Just look at Dr. Seuss and people fighting over that. It's a dumb children's book. It doesn't matter. So, if you don't understand that, research what inequity and equity means. That's more important than equality. Uh, namaste. <clears throat> Look at it this way. If you're on a boat and you hit an iceberg and it tears a huge hole in your hull and a tiny hole also, what are you gonna fix first? Are you gonna sit there and stop the people that are trying to fix the giant hole <clears throat> and tell them that this little hole is important, just as important as a big hole? And now we have to spend the same amount of effort and energy and resources on fixing this tiny hole. <clears throat> when we have this huge hole, spider web, letting in mass amounts of water. It's an analogy for black lives and all lives matter. <clears throat> so let's fix the giant hole first and then we can plug the tiny holes. They say those who don't know their past are doomed to repeat it. Well, I understand history is important, but I, I don't know that I fully agree with that statement. <clears throat> when you think you know how something's going to go from past experiences, you've already locked in that thing into a certain outcome. When you distrust people, you make them untrustworthy. It's a quote from the Book of the Way, which, as you may well know, I'm fond of. <clears throat> so, maybe a little parable to illustrate what I'm talking about. Say one day, there's a knock on your door and a homeless person they're asking to be fed and, and taken care of. So you do it. <clears throat> and, uh... So you decide to be charitable. And you bring the homeless person in. Feed them. Let them stay there during the night. The next day, send them on their way. Maybe ten years goes by. Another homeless person shows up at your door asking for the same thing. And you reference your past experience. <clears throat> so you do the same thing. You wake up. You've been robbed in the night. You used your past experience to let you bypass your discernment. Instead of judging each experience and instance on its own, you let the past color your judgment. So, in this way we can see that not knowing is the ultimate way of knowing. Then you have to be present, and you have to analyze what's happening, and use discernment, rather than relying on what somebody in the past has decided was the truth of a certain instant or, you know, occurrence. How many times in your life have you been told by something that something was no good and you believed them and you let that affect the choices you made and then one day you made a different choice and discovered that that thing was good. It was something you were into. It was something you found value in. And that person that gave you that advice wasn't on the same wavelength as you. In that case, instance, you're letting that person's past experience affect your present and future decisions instead of experiencing it for yourself. 
Another analogy that I like about letting pa the past color our present and future is if you take a, a sheet of paper and that represents your life, your life experiences, everything that's open to you, and you have a bad experience, so take your pencil, your pen, whatever, draw a line across one of the corners, shade that in. That's that past experience that was bad that you decided you don't want to experience ever again. Those uh, kinds of experiences keep happening. You keep crossing off corner sections of your paper, which is, represents your life and your life choices. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, shading them in, and eventually you'll be left with a tiny little window in the middle or wherever, of uh, what you're willing to experience and let into your life. Everything else, you automatically block out. It's a brave new world out there. If you don't understand that, what I mean, or how that can be, because you don't see it being new, or you don't see any hope for the future, it's because you're not allowing yourself to. You're feeding that negative wolf inside you instead of the positive wolf. Try watching some uh, uplifting stuff. Personally, I'm sick of all the violence and the hate and suffering. And uh, I don't have any patience for it. So what I'm gonna do has forced the world around me to be positive because I'm creating my own reality as each of us is. We're creating it together, we're co-creators. So the more of us that uh, are done with the old ways, the better it will be for everyone. Even those who are refusing to let go of the old ways they don't it was working for them or they're just convinced that that's the best way that any other way is going to be worse afraid of change those of us who aren't afraid of change we're going to make it happen the progressive always wins on a long enough time frame make no mistake it will be uncomfortable Especially for those who are comfortable with the old ways. But those of us who want change, we're already uncomfortable. That's what causes change, it's discomfort. <laughs>